compound interest or interest on interest. This is what we're going to see in today's video. I have three practical examples to show. We're going to learn a formula and also a function that can help us. And then we can do the same thing. However, row by row, we can calculate the result of the compound interest. Basically, we are going to calculate what is going to be your final value of savings or a specific number of periods. That can be whether years, months, weeks, or whatever at an annual interest rate or a monthly interest rate. And we can also use as a criteria a contribution or, in other words, a monthly payment that we can add to the current value or to the current investment value. So let's find out how can we use Excel to help us with the compound interest. Let's start with the first formula where we can calculate the future value or the final amount. And within the arguments for this formula, we have the principal or initial investment, interest rate, and finally, the number of periods. So let's say you want to invest $10,000 into your savings account for two years or 24 months with a interest rate of 10% a year. However, I cannot use as a unit of measurement for the interest rate years and use another a different unit of measurement for the number of periods if i use interest rates as years i also need to use the number of periods as years but if i'm using let's say 24 months i need to transform 10 percent a year per months and how can i do it so equal sign 10 percent divides by 12 because 12 is the, quantity, is the quantity of months that I have in one year. So let me hit enter. I'm going to have here 0 0.0083 and etc. But let me change this number format so I can go to the home tab and transform it into a percentage like this 1%. However, it's, a, it's rounding the number, the result. So what we can do is again in the home tab, I can go here and increase the decimal places 1, 2. Okay, now I have more preciseness. Another thing, this $10,000, I can also put into a currency format, let's say. $10,000, 0.83 interest rate a month, and 24 months as the number of periods. So what is going to be the future value considering all those criteria? Let's do this formula. Equal sign P, principal or initial investment, $10,000. Multiply asterisk, open parentheses, 1, add to 2, plus the interest rate that is 0.83 percent close parenthesis circumflex sign and then 24 okay to the power of 24 let me hit enter twelve thousand two hundred and three dollars and nine one cents and the cool thing is because we are using the values outside the, the formula or into cells if I change the value of any cell, the final result is going to update automatically for me. So let's take a look here. Instead of using 24 as the number of periods, I can use 36 and then enter. Now I'm going to have a different result. And instead of using $10,000, and if I use $15,000, the result is going to automatically again update for me. And if, instead of using 10% a year, and if I have, let's say, 10.5%, Enter. Again, the result are going to update. This is how we can manually create the formula to calculate the future value or the final amount. However, Excel has a formula called or a function called FB or final value that can basically do the same thing. But the cool thing with this function right here is we don't need to remember the formula and all the arguments because a function is much easier to use. And uh, another thing is we have the PMT or the contribution, the payment per period. Let's say you start with $10,000 as we did before in 24 uh, months. So we're going to have this result right here. But let's say every month you did a contribution of $100. You can also consider this criteria to this new function. So let's do it. Let's say the interest rate is going to be the same. So let me copy this number right here and place right here okay it's the same the number of periods maybe we can use again 24 just to compare the two results pmt i want to start with zero okay i will not use any contribution for this first example the present value is the value that i'm having right now is the initial investment so let's use again ten thousand dollars 
and let's calculate the future value equal sign fb let's double click one two to select the function the rate is going to be the, the interest rate trauma number of periods 24 months trauma pmt is going to be zero you can either click on the cell or you can input comma again to skip this criteria doesn't matter and pv is the present value that is ten thousand dollars let me close parentheses and hit enter i'm gonna have as result the same value as before as we can notice right here the only difference is the fb function in excel is going to always retrieve a negative value so what we can do is one two to open the function immediately after the equal sign we can input a minus sign and if we hit enter now we have a positive result and let's say now i want to do something different uh let me select those values right here and change the format into a dollar format okay the initial value is ten thousand dollars however i want to make a contribution every single month of a hundred dollars so let's go here to the function one two and because we skip it the pmt now let me click on the cell to select that the cell right now we have the function using all the cells as a reference let me hit enter uh, the same result as before nothing changed here but let's say i want to do a contribution of a hundred dollars every single month let me hit enter and let's see what's going to happen with the result okay now instead of having roughly twelve thousand dollars now we have almost fifteen thousand dollars and so forth so this is how we can use both of those formulas in excel to help us now let's go to a different example how we can calculate the final value of your savings account we can start here with investment value the initial investment value let's say one thousand dollars enter let me change this number to a columns one okay and let me select both of those columns and to increase the width click in between a and b click hold and drag to the right okay like this i can also have here the interest rate that can be again let's say equal sign 8.5 percent a year however i want to use months so divide by 12 enter okay let me change to percentage and also increase the decimal places to have more preciseness in the next row i can use the number of periods let's say or we don't need to use number of periods right here or yeah we can use number of periods 24 and maybe the contribution that can be a hundred or it can be a thousand dollars ever seen no month. let me change to the current one okay like this so let's use those first criteria to create here our template i want to start with the first column being the month and here we can have of course the first month that is zero is the month that will you start investing your first amount so zero the starting point and then one two three however instead of manually creating the sequence or select everything click hold and drag to make excel continue the sequence for us what we can do is in the, in the, in the third cell equal sign the previous cell add to one enter now if i click hold and drag i'm gonna have automatically the, a sequence one by one in the next row we can have the current value and the current value can start with equal sign the initial investment a thousand dollars enter now let's move on to another column that is going to be contribution equal sign a thousand dollars and then enter and then in the next month let's say you're going to do always the same contribution the same monthly payment a thousand dollars so equal sign the previous value and then enter if you click hold and drag down you're gonna have always the same contribution and if let's say in one specific month you don't want to contribute with any value you can just hit zero or whatever you can change the number if you change the number of course all the other numbers are going to change too so you can you're gonna need to manually input again the in the next month the the contribution right but anyway we can see that we can change any value for any different row or period in the next column we can have the interest rate equal sign is going to be the rate that i did right here in this cell and then enter and for all the other periods the rate is going to be the same equal sign the previous one enter click hold and drag down and of course if you want to change any interest rate for any different period you can do so as i i, I did 
show here before with the contribution is the same thing. Now we can also have here the profit where we can calculate what is the profit that we are having. In the first cell, the profit is going to be zero, right? Because it's the first month. But let's keep up like this. Now let's go to select all those columns in between one and another. Click hold and drag to the right just to increase the size. Okay, much better. Now I can also align horizontally and vertically everything. Select all the headers, change to a different color just to make it look cooler. Okay, like this. Put everything in bold and also do the same thing right here. Hope the, the format. I can also put borders like this. And also here, I can put borders. Okay, I think now it's okay. Let's see. What is going to be my current value to the, the next month? I start with $8,000, but in the next month, how much I'm going to have? Let's see. Equal sign, the previous values, multiply by the rate. If I hit enter, I'm going to have only $7.08. This is actually my profit, so I need to add this value right here with the previous one. So let's do it. One, two, and just to make sure, Excel do first, does first, right? Uh, this calculation right here. Let's open parentheses and close parentheses, or put everything in between parentheses. Now we can add to the previous value and then enter. Okay. Now with we don't consider the contribution, but only consider the rate. We're gonna have this increase in the current value if i click hold and drag down this is how the value is going to is going to grow now let's make some change here in the formula because of course as we have a contribution of eight thousand dollars or whatever the amount every single month we also need to add this contribution into the calculus double click one two and then add to the contribution and then i can hit enter okay let me bring this formula down like this. And okay, so this is how we can basically calculate the current value. And the profit we can calculate in a different way. However, before we calculate the profit, let's see if it's working. Let me get rid of the contribution. Okay, or actually I can change right here, much better, right? Contribution, zero, enter, okay. Now, as we can see, the contribution is equal to the result right here. Everything is connected. Let's use again the equal sign final value formula to calculate one, two. The rate is going to be 0.71, comma. The number of periods is going to be 24. Of course, we do not have 24 here yet, but I, we're going to do it later. Comma. PMT is the monthly contribution or the, the monthly payment. Let's skip this for now. So zero, comma. And the initial investment is $1,000. Let me. Close parentheses and hit enter. Of course, we're going to have a negative value right here, but uh, let's immediately, after the equal sign, input a negative sign and then enter. Okay, now let's bring this table into the 24th row. 26, let's keep up with 24. Okay, so this is the value $1,184.59, exactly the same as we have right here. Okay, so it's working. The table that we did right here is working perfectly equal to the function. Now let me get rid of the function and let's continue to create here the table. And let's, or again, let me undo the action. Let's add here a contribution. PM, uh, PMT, instead of zero, I can use this value right here. Enter, and let's change to $1,000 and then enter. Okay, 27, 24, 5. 27, 24, 5, 0, 3. Yeah, exactly the same result. So it's working. Now let's go back here to the table and how can we calculate the profit? Zero in the in the first month, in the first period, and in the second one, in the next equal sign, the previous value times the rate. And then we can hit enter. Because let's say if we have an investment of one thousand dollars with this rate right here, we're not gonna have the profit in the same month, but in the next. So this is why I'm calculating right here. The, the the profit right so let me bring this formula down like this okay and with all those informations we can calculate the total contribution we can also calculate the current value that is going to be this value right here always the last one we can also calculate the initial value but uh, i know that uh, we already have the initial value that is eight thousand dollars however 
with those three informations right here, we can calculate the total investment or the total savings, savings or the profit, whatever. And we can also have here the total profit. Okay, let me select everything right here. Put uh, borders and also increase the size, the width of those columns. Okay, to so calculate the total contribution, we can add up all the values that we have in the contribution column. So let's go to the total contribution, equal sign, sum, double click, one, two, and then I can select the entire H column like this. And then I can hit enter. Okay, let me transform this value into a currency one, $25,000 as the contribution. The current value is going to be the last one. However, how can I retrieve? How is the last value as the result? I can use a function called equal sign max function to always return the maximum value because of course the next value is always going to be greater than the previous one so this is how we can use this is why we can use the max function double click one two and i uh, want to have the current value everything within this column enter let me change again to a currency format and the initial value is always going to be equal sign the first value that i have right here that is actually equal to this one but anyway enter okay now what, what is going to be the savings the savings are going to be everything that i contribute plus add to the current value okay because i have the current value added to the contribution so this is what we can do or actually maybe the first contribution here can be zero or whatever but anyway equal sign the addition of the contribution but we already did it it's just right here contribution add to the current value or the initial value sorry okay like this and then we can hit enter twenty six thousand dollars and what, what what is going to be the, the total profit equal sign sum double click one two the profit is going to be everything that i have in the profit stock so let me select everything right here uh the addition right and then enter let me change to the currency format two thousand two hundred and forty five dollars in three cents and we can also calculate the total profit in a different way. Take a look here. Equal sign, we can have the current value minus the total contribution. And if I hit enter, I'm going to have the same result as before. So I think it's better, a better idea to do like this because we can use the results that we already have to the left of, the, of this template. Equal sign, current value minus the total contribution, and then enter. Okay, the same result as before. And another thing that you can do here is create a chart to better visualize the data that you have. So let's say I want to visualize the profit. I can start with the second row because here is where I have the first month. Okay, so here I have the, the zero where I started. Let me select all those values and then insert. Maybe I can use a column chart. And that's it. And now I can see all the periods that I have within this table. And also, here in the chart, I can analyze and visualize it better. Something that you can do that I prefer is click in the values to the left, get rid of those values, get rid of the grid line, and also you can increase the area of the chart. Now you can go to chart design, add chart element, and then data label outside end. Now it's much easier to see the values for each one of the columns or the categories, the periods. There you have. And one more thing is, if you want to increase the number of periods, of course, you can select the last row, click, hold, and drag down. That way, you're gonna have the same calculation for the next rows. And if you want to get rid of some rows, let's say I want to keep up with 30 different periods, I can select any everything that is underneath the number 30, and then get rid of those values. Simple as that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how can we calculate compound interest or interest on interest in excel and if you have any questions or any suggestions to the next videos let me know comment down below and i see you tomorrow as every day has a new video i see you there